This person challenged me in the comments to create an animation in Canva just like the morph animation in PowerPoint. I immediately went to YouTube and searched for it, morph PowerPoint, and I found this amazing animation. But can it be made in Canva? Of course, I was able to find a way and here's the step-by-step -step tutorial. We're going to go to Canva's homepage and I'm going to start by creating a presentation document as we are going to recreate a PowerPoint transition effect. You can apply exactly the same animation effect if you are creating a video. So you can start by a video document or a presentation document. As I already told you, I'm going to use a presentation document. And as in the video animation I found on YouTube, I'm also going to use fruits but instead of finding the image on google images or any other kind of platform i'm going to use the elements available in the library so i'm going to go to elements and this time instead of using blueberries i'm going to use dragon fruits so let me type dragon fruit in enter then i'm going to go to photos and for this trick to look great i'm going to use images with transparent background that's why i'm going to filter the results by cutouts only and let me see what do we find in here i want to find the fruit only the single fruit yeah like these images are actually perfect and as you can see these are pro images if you want to use them and you have a canva free account we have a canva pro free trial in the description okay i'm gonna go for these fruits or these photos right here so i'm gonna add some of them make them small so let me add different photos so we have variety in here I think I'm going to stay with this selection here and what I can do is to simply duplicate a couple of these elements and I can also flip them horizontally or vertically. What we want to do here is to place them around the page but I'm being conscious that I'm going to use this light here in a presentation so I want to leave some room in the middle to add my first text box. So something like this, it's going to work. Once you have your elements around the page, you are going to select them all and group them. Then duplicate them and we're going to bring these elements below like so, but make sure that you can still see a couple of elements in the page. And what we're going to do here is to select both of these grouped elements and group them again. And then reposition them so we can see first the first group and we have the other group of elements below. So you can see that we have all of these elements here, some that are visible and some are outside the white canvas. Now, the next step would be to add again some of these fruits in here, but this time we're going to make them bigger. So I think I'm going to start with this one first and then we are going to edit effects, select blur and from here select whole image. Add the intensity, I think 60 points will work close this window and now you can do the same with another image in here or simply duplicate this one i think i want to add some variety in here again on these bigger images so i'm gonna add a couple of different photos in here and we're gonna add the same blur effect to these images so go to edit blur whole image and then go to 60 Now the next step is to select these bigger images, group them and duplicate them again. I love to have variety in my design so I'm going to flip this group and then position it below like this. Again we are going to select both elements or both groups and group them one more time. You can move these elements upwards and you can keep adding some more elements if you wish. I have added three more images and I'm going to group them to this bigger group on top. 
Okay, so I have the group of blurry dragon fruits. And now I'm going to change the color in the background of my slide using one of the photo colors. So I'm going to go for one of these green colors. I'm going to go for this one. This is starting to look good. And I'm going to add a text box. So by pressing the key T, I have my text box here. And I'm going to use a font called Agrandir. And I'm going to go for a heavy weight. So I'm selecting black and then changing the color to white so we have a better contrast. Now I'm going to type here dragon fruit, select the whole text inside the text box and then go for uppercase. We're going to close this window because we don't need it anymore. And the next step is to duplicate this page. Now, on the second page, we are going to reduce the size of this title and move it upwards. Now, we're going to add another text box that is going to appear on the second page. So we're going to text and this time I'm going to add a body text box. I'm going to add the text that I want to have on this slide and I'm going to hit enter and key here and also at the beginning of the text box. I want to have an empty line on top and below this text. I'm going to change the color to white and going to align it to the left and then positioning this text box in here. The next step to recreate this morph effect is to move the group of fruits upwards. So I'm going to position layers and select one of the group of fruits. So going for the one below and I'm going to move them upwards. I'm going to select the second group of fruits, so the bigger fruits, and also move them upwards. After you have moved this group of fruits, you can reposition your text box if you believe this helps the text to be easier to read. Now we're going to do another trick in here and it is that we're going to copy this text box, the one that we start seeing on page two. We're going to Ctrl C or Command C or copy this text box, go back to page one and paste it in here. So Ctrl V or Command V. I'm going to position this text box below and I want to see only the first empty line of text. So we basically don't see anything, but the text box is still here. Now we're going to add a couple of pages more doing exactly the same process. I'm going to duplicate this page. You're going to position yourself on the last page. And if you want, you can again adjust the size of this text box. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller and move it upwards a little bit more. And this text box, I want to hide it away. So I'm going to move it to the left, but be mindful that you still see the text box in the page. Not the text, but the text box. I have an empty space in here and what I'm going to do is to duplicate this page to add another new text box on this area. So I'm going to add one here, maybe it's smaller, and I'm going to change the content of this text box. So I'm going to do exactly the same just in case to have two empty lines of text, one above, one below. And I'm also going to add another text box and write Pitaya in here. This one should be smaller as well. And I'm actually going to change the alignment of this text box. So it is aligned to the right. And now that you have these two new text boxes on the third page, you are going to select them, copy, go to the previous page and paste them here. I'm going to move these text boxes to the right. They're still here, but we don't see them. And as you can see, what I'm always trying to do is that every time that I add a new element to a new slide, like for example, here we have these two new text boxes, I'm copying these new elements and going back to the previous page, paste them here, but then I'm trying to hide them outside of the page. We still have the elements, but they are hidden. Okay, let's go back to page three and we have to go to position 
position to select this group of fruits and move them upwards one more time. And I'm making sure that I move both group of elements, so the little pitayas here or dragon fruits and the bigger ones. And my last step would be to add one more page and I'm going to end with this one. So I'm going to move this text box above. I'm also going to bring this text box above and I'm going to move this title around here. Now I need to add a new text box in here but I know that I have one hidden on this corner and I'm gonna use it because this text box actually we don't need it anymore. I'm gonna reduce the size of this text. I'm also going to increase the size of this title and before we add this morph effect or this morph animation we need to move the fruits behind. So let's go to position, layers, select the group that you want to move. I'm going to select the second group and we are ready to add this transition or this animation. So we're going to hover in between the first two pages, click on add transition and select match and move. From here you can select how fast you want this transition to go and I'm going for 1.5. Then make sure to apply between all pages and we are ready to preview this presentation or this animation with the morph effect which is called match and move in Canva. So let me go full screen and show you how this morph effect is looking in these slides. Remember that you can apply these animations on presentations but also on animated videos. And also let me know what do you think about this animation? Do you find it interesting? Would you like to learn more tricks like this? Please let me know in the comments and also remember that you can leave me more animation ideas that you don't know how to create but you would like to challenge me to find a way to recreate it in Canva. Here's our Canva Pro free trial so you can enjoy all the premium media in the library and also here's a tutorial to learn how to create this typing animation effect in Canva. I think that's it for this tutorial and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye!